New England sports fans can never get enough of the glory days. That's what a Boston Globe columnist is counting on as he opens his notebooks from the 80s and Celtic stories spill out. Here's Anthony Everett. Bird in the corner, double fake, jumper. For Celtics fans of a certain age, there will never be another team like it. The 1980s Celtics, led by Larry Bird, the hick from French Lick. I forgot to tell Mr. Arbach, but I would have played for nothing. <laughs> now comes a new book by longtime Boston Globe columnist Dan Shaughnessy, Wish It Lasted Forever, Life with the Larry Bird Celtics. I mean, everybody knows who won the games, you know, so, you know, Larry Magic, Celtics Lakers, you know, we don't need a book to tell you who won those games, go over the play-by-play -play and the histories. But what it does is it captures a time when you had this unique group of individuals who were so confident in their own greatness, their own talents. You didn't have the petty jealousies, who's getting the most touches, you know, who's getting the most money. Wish it lasted forever, a quote from Bill Walton about the special camaraderie he found with his new teammates when he signed with the Celtics in 1985. A team chemistry Shaughnessy had never seen before, nor since. I'm telling you, you go to their practices, it was joyous. There was all the busting of chops and the camaraderie and the competition and they really rooted for each other. Chronicles' Andrea Hall got a taste of the Celtics vibe in a 1985 interview with the newly signed Walton. Many East Coast fans probably have never even seen you play. Well, the older ones have, the younger ones haven't, but uh, I haven't. I used to play. And, uh, I have never seen a guy play, black and white television. <laughs> <laughs> Shaughnessy's inside access to this special team comes from a time when reporters traveled with the players, riding on the bus, staying in hotels, and sharing meals with the team. A bygone era. You know, today you have this moat. The separation of, of them versus us is just enormous. And they, they, they fly privately, they charter, they stay in five-star hotels. So it's very hard for the modern reporters to tell the fans what they're like. We really don't know what's going on with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, the new coach. Do they like him? Do they like each other? I could tell you they didn't like Bill Fitch in 82, 83, because I was there every day. At the center of the book, hardcourt savant Larry Bird. So Larry was uh, slow to warm up to strangers and didn't like writers, predisposed to not like or trust writers. So that, that was two strikes against me out of the gate. Shaughnessy describes what might be called a good-natured, antagonistic relationship with Bird. It was the playoffs in 85. Larry's hand got messed up in a barroom fight, but he was practicing with his hand like this, tape, tape. After practice, I'm like, you can't play in a game with tape on your hand like that. He says, Scoop, I could tape my whole hand up and make more shots than you. A free throw contest followed. $5 a pop, Bird with his hand taped up like a club. He has figured it out. I heard him, he goes, I figured this out. The next night, Shaughnessy is courtside for a Celtics Sixers game. He runs over to me with his greedy palm out, goes, where's my 160 scoop? I give him his money and he stuffed it right into his sock. Play with my money in his shoe, the whole game was gross. <laughs> God, that's fantastic. I think deep down, secretly, he liked me, but I can't, I can't prove it. Uh, unlike uh, Robert Parrish. Robert Parrish hated me, and no one knew why. It was right out of the jump. Fast forward 37 years later, I'm, I'm putting the book together, realizing I got, I got nothing from Chief, had nothing then, nothing now, and I asked Cedric Maxwell, Max, what was up with Robert Parrish and me? He said, Chief just has a disdain for your ass. Well, what are you going to do with that? Wish it lasted forever. An intimate and affectionate look back at this golden time and team. Bill Walton, for one, ever mindful of just how magical that moment was. He told me, he said, when you write this book, he said, empty this resource on this book, because you, you, whatever adjectives you want to use about this, you cannot overstate how great this was. With the exception of Dennis Johnson, who passed away a few years ago, and of course, the chief, Robert Parrish, Dan spoke with most of the players from that 80s team for this book. One big exception, Larry Bird, who declined to participate. Dan says he was a complicated and fascinating character.